and I'm the co-founder of Verde Pinguino. Uh, but what would I like to talk about today? I would like to talk about our new generation are surfing complexity. Complicated and complex are often used as the same word, but there are a lot of differences between these two words. Raising your hand, how many people know this difference? Okay, there is someone to be sure that everybody are aligned about this difference. This is complicated. I don't know how a mechanic clock works, but studying the system, I will know that moving a specific gear, it will move other gears that, for example, move the hour hand. So, in this kind of system, there is a solution, but it's not visible for everyone. And in this kind of system, I can sense, analyze, and respond. In this kind of system, we can recognize good practice. So, what does complex mean? This is complex. Determinate who will be the winner is impossible. There are a lot of variables. As our team, with all these problems, we started, we sick, there are the weather. Determinate how the wind will blow is impossible. And also, there are other players. So, in this kind of system, we can probe, sense, and respond. So, in a complex system, we can recognize emergent practice. But let me spend just a few words to give you a little bit of context about what I'm going to talk about. We help people and organizations to improve their brand, helping them to better understand where they are, who they want to attract, and how they can do it. So we work in close contact with business management and marketing, and in general with all the organizations in order to develop experiences inside and outside. So we don't work just about visual identity, but we go deep, starting from people to the ecosystem through the business model. Um, we work on the concept of perception and experience. This is because a lot of people, the, the people, are less rational than they think they are. So perception is often strongly affected by the situation or context or how something is presented. There is a difference between how we feel when we experience things and how we remember them. So we believe that the evaluation of value is increasingly based on experience. I would like to do a little game with you. I will tell you some words and raising your hands, you have to choose between two options. So the first word is Apple. Raising your hand, how many people thought about iPhone, Mac, iPad? Okay, and how many people thought about the fruit? Okay, nice. The second word is about bug. How many people thought about the insect? Okay, how many people thought about the error code or these kind of things? Okay. The last word is tweet. How many people thought about Twitter? And how many people thought about birds? Okay, these were just a few examples how our experience can change the way how we perceive. So, talking about how we perceive or how we are perceived, we are about 20 professionists from different countries and different skills. We are facilitators, designers, developers, copywriters, and so on. But, oh my God, it doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay, however, we are um, 20 professionals from different countries and different skills. We are professionists who work together to reach the goals. Um, an important aspect for us is about alignment, is about communication, is about team play. In order to do that, in order to serve complexity, we have different rituals and habits but we have four main principles. In the abstract of the talk, I've written about the difference between the approach of my dad to the world of work and mine. 
Our approach is completely different if compared to my data experience, but also if compared to other company. So let me share with you this principle. The first one is no time, no place. We are guided by shared goals, not from time or places. So people are able to organize the work as they prefer. Obviously, we have deadline, but it's discussed with the client and with the team. Let me explain this concept better with the second principle. We have based our approach to work with client, but also with the operational team, on the principle of plan, do, check, act, that allow a continuous improvement. We work for iterations of about two weeks, co-creating with the client with quick rituals during the iteration in order to align the client about what we are doing and with a feedback session at the end. This allow us to work on true feedback from reality, allow us to be adaptive. And feedback are a lot important for us because they can help us to know what we can improve, why and how. Not just inside the operational team, but in all levels of work, with clients, stakeholders, and so on. The third principle is about, is about, uh, co, um, is about co creation. We have no job title, but just people with their competencies. This allows a uh, grow up of people who work with us because it's strictly related to the last principle because we believe in the power of individuals who work together with creativity and passion. So, we have four main principles. Guided by shared goals, continuous feedback, no job title, just people with their competencies, and co-create with creativity and passion. In order to do that, as I said, we have also habits and rituals. I know that probably most of you know what a standing meeting is, but for who don't know, it's a quick, it's a quick ritual of about 50 minutes, where each people of the team answer to these questions. What did I do? What will I do? Do I see any block? This simple ritual allow a constant alignment, allow let emerge immediately what can be the problem about the projects and give us continuous feedback. Another important principle for us about the alignment is the weekly meeting. The weekly meeting is uh, not specific for each project, but we discuss about possible opportunities as company, but also as person. And we discuss about projects in general and about what is happening. I know that a lot of you know what a retrospective is. Retrospective is a powerful ritual and it's most important for us. A retrospective allows the grow up of people and the teams. Teams discuss about what was successful about the last iteration or the time period covered by that retrospective and how can we um, bring all these kind of things in the future iteration, in the future projects. So, all these principles, so co-creation, feedbacks in and out, perception and experience allow us, allow us to be adaptive. But they are not just about the operational part, but also our business model is guided by these principles. Every four months, we talk about our business model. We try to understand if we are missing something, if we had validated our assumption, and we usually organize a full day workshop to discuss, to explore our perception, our experience about ourselves, and then start to working on our business model canvas. So, um, it makes, in my experience with traditional company, they usually ask for tools, they usually talk about rules, but the key is about principle. And in my experience, they often don't have shared principle. They don't have spaces for feedback. So we believe that small moves, smartly made, can set big things in motion. Because we are in a complex system. So as I said before, in a complex system, you can probe, sense, and respond. 
So you need to feel constantly what is happening. Um, as I said, we work on the concept of experience and perception. This is important for us. But um, we, we also live in a, um, we work in a complex system, but we also live in a complex system. And a beautiful example about that is the reintroduction of wolves in the Yellowstone National Park in the United States after being absent about 17 years. The reintroduction of wolves were just a small move, but with a big impact in the ecosystem. Wolves generate a series of events that at a certain point changed the flow of the rivers. It's amazing how wolves was able to change the flow of the rivers. What's the point? The point is that we do what we do because probably we want to have an impact to the world. I hope a positive impact. But the important thing is that if we want to have an impact to the world, we need to feel the world. We need to start to think not just as person, but as an ecosystem. In this period, I'm thinking about our body. I'm thinking about our organs and how, if we go deep, we have the relation between atoms, cells, and molecules. So, I started to think about company, and now the concept is the same. Company is the relationship between other people, people as employees or partner, but also people as competitors or clients. And company work in a market. And a market is the relationship between other company and people. So, what's the point? The point is that we are not just molecules. We are the relationship between them. Obviously, molecules have their own identity. And they are different, they have a different identity about my identity, my characteristic, but they are strictly related. Try to think about DNA. DNA is um, bring, um, oh my God, contain a lot of information about our genetic information that um, it's useful to grow and have, um, characterize our identity, our characteristic, for example, the skin color. So, a beautiful thing is that my parents mm, bring me part of the DNA. And DNA, as history teaches us, change. It's adaptive. Because, but the question is how DNA change? It changes based on experiences. So, we need to feel again. And the point is, I'm not talking about biology, I'm talking about how in nature we are able to be adaptive. And now we need to feel. We need to feel ourselves, we need to feel our family, our city, our company as something of bigger, as an ecosystem. And it changed about the experiences. So experiences is an important concept for us. But how this can answer the question how new generation are surfing complexity? New generation are able, are learning to surf complexity because we are sharing our experience. We are starting to talk about the importance of people. We are starting to talk about the ecosystem model, not just as person, not just as uh, egoism. So, we are naturally learn to serve complexity. And again, small moves, smartly made, can set big things in motion. It's an important thing, because we don't know how can my action can have the consequence in the futures as the wolves in Yellowstone. So, small moves, smartly made, can set big things in motion. Thank you.